Sanjana Kapoor, who's a very well-known theatre personality. And Sanjana has been synonymous with Prithvi. She has challenged Mumbai theatre groups with festivals, demanded new work, toured festivals, presented theatre at other Mumbai venues, and introduced an arts outreach program. She also expanded Prithvi into a broader cultural hub. And now she has introduced the India Theatre Forum, an all-India network of theatre practitioners. And Junoon is her platform to take her innovations to audiences beyond Prithvi. So the title of her talk is The Fire in One's Belly, How to Recognize It, Nurture It, and Realize It. And that is what keeps her going and takes her years of learning in theatre. So it's a wonderful pleasure to have Sanjana here, and she's our concluding speaker for the evening. I, it's just really bizarre to be here talking to all of you. Some of you I recognize and some of you I don't. Um, and why do I choose to talk about the fire in my belly um, is primarily because I'm really fortunate to have discovered it, like a lot of us here have. And I think that's, that's the greatest gift any child can have and any adult can have, is to find that fire and then to be able to lead a life with it. And I think this school and possibly this stage has something to do with that. Um, and that's really quite special. This gentleman was extraordinarily special in my life. Uh, Jeffrey Kendall, my maternal grandfather, was my all-time hero. A complete madman. He decided that India was the place he wanted to live. He came the very first time with ENSA, which was a traveling theater company for the entertainment of the troops during the Second World War. Went back to the UK with his gorgeous wife, um, where there was depression, there was the gray, miserable British weather. And he said, no, I'm coming back to India. And he came back and performed for the next 30 years in this country. And these are the stories I grew up with, the stories of his travels, of his adventures through this magnificent land, and the audiences that he performed for. Um, that's my mother um, next to the, the lovely lady with the brown hair in the middle, and that tiny little girl is my aunt, Felicity Kendall. And this, these are the places they travel to all over the country for years and years and years and years. And I don't spend 10 days of my life without meeting somebody who has seen them in their school or in their college or in their youth. And it's transformed their lives. Uh, the memories have stayed with them. And that is magical. That is truly a blessing, I think. And then I had the other side of my family, which was my other grandfather, Prithvi Raj Kapoor. And he traveled around the country, again at the peak of his film career. Uh, he didn't throw up his film career. He continued his film career. That funded his theater. Um, and he took theater across the country. Here he is recording for the radio. But he took theater that he believed could transform this to be independent country. And he thought that this was the language he had to speak with the people in India. That, of course, is my gorgeous father. Um, and this was the audience that, that Prithvi Raj Kapoor performed for, again, all over the country. And then, many years later, my parents were fortunate enough to be able to breathe life into his dream, which was to have a home for theater and give back to society. That was something my grandfather, I think, taught my dad, and my dad carried it on, and I think has left a little bit with all of us, is to give back to society what you get from it. And so instead of turning this plot of land into fantastic real estate and a mall or a building or something, this mad family that I belong to have, have run Prithvi Theatre for the last over 33 years, 34 years, and that's, this is my favorite picture in the whole wide world. This, this is, we used to go for class trips here, actually, when my mother was class mother. And we used to take my dog, Yum Yum, and the class, and we used to run around this uh, dilapidated building before it became Prithvi Theatre. And we used to play Chor Police and Dabba Ice Spice, which I'm sure none of you know how to play, you lot in the back. Do you know how to play Dabba Ice Spice? <laughs> Terrible. So, <laughs> so this is what happened, the birth of Prithvi Theatre. And really, it was about... Um, giving a home to theater, creating a space that professional um, theater groups could um, live in and thrive in. And uh, it wasn't about, in fact, my grandfather was really mad at my mother for never performing on this beautiful, beautiful stage that she built. And she just didn't want to because she thought that people would think she was promoting herself. So it was sort of an inverted whatever. 
not snobbery, what's the other word, whatever it is. But I mean, it, it's really sad because it is a magical space. It really is beautiful. And she never performed there, but my grandparents did. And what happens there is, is really a whole array of things right through the year. Um, and it's a tiny microcosm of a world in itself, ironically called Prithvi. Um, but really, I think it's run with a great amount of attention to detail, with a great amount of passion and personability. And, but there is a dream. There is a dream that connects whatever happens in this space to a larger entity in our lives, to a belief that theater has a role to play in our lives, like so does music or dance or anything else. And I think that that is something that is what kept me terrified from working at Prithvi for many, 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 many years. I was so scared. I thought, no, I can't. It's too much of a responsibility. It's, 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 I know nothing. I have no experience of what my parents had. And I, 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 uh, I, I couldn't possibly uh, endeavor to, to, to be in charge of such a huge responsibility. And it ever so gradually, more and more responsibility fell onto um, my lap. But I think everything I did or we, we, we initiated there came from the huge question of why. Why are we doing what we're doing? And what is it serving? And, and it was a constant um, search. It was never a feeling of saying, yes, we've achieved what we needed to achieve. Uh, of course, you had magical moments of great joy or when something works and the audience comes out thrilled. But it was always a question of, there was a tremendous amount of fear also of saying, is, are we programming right? Uh, is this valid here? Is this uh, needed here? Uh, and a constant visiting of that question, which I think is essential for anything we do um, in any field of life, actually. Um, my personal journey went further than Prithvi, uh, went further than this, this, this home that is a beautiful home in itself, and uh, led me to uh, pull together with a group of people um, something called the India Theatre Forum. And it, it's more of a network that pulls people across the country to strengthen our field. We are an incredibly ignored entity. And I am forced more and more to have to articulate what it is that is my fire in my belly and what it is that I believe theater does play in our lives today. And it's a tough thing because for me, a lot of it has been instinctual. I, I, I didn't know what it was, why I felt what I felt. But I was forced to articulate it because there is very little value for this world. And Today I can stand up with this new baby that we've given birth to called Junoon and say, yes, we are doing what we do because we believe the arts and theater primarily have to play an integral role in our lives. They have to be as essential as good schools, good roads, good air, good water. It is as important and more so today than ever before, more so with migratory societies being developed, more so with urban creations across our land. And I think that it is actually, you know, it's critically needed. So I also read this incredible note. This is the India Theatre Forum that was set up. And then I read a few years ago this amazing note by these very clever people that work in McKinsey and our very clever prime minister who wanted Bombay to become the next Shanghai and a world-class city. And I read pages after pages after pages of what that vision was. And in a tiny little footnote at the bottom, there was something about culture. And we have this fantastic 5,000-year-old culture, but we don't take it seriously. We don't really think it needs any nurturing or any platform or any infrastructure whatsoever. It'll just survive, we think. And it gave me, it prompted me to actually dream up this dream for what I think this city could do. And I think the city is quite unique. It's quite unique because it has the software, it has the talent. It has all those people out there who create and have the crazy junoon and the kira in them to go and do theater or, or, or go after music or go after dance. And it has the audience that actually is willing to put their money out and say, yes, we want this in our lives. But it doesn't have the infrastructure, as is the problem with big businesses all over the country anyway. So what are we complaining about? But I think today is the time when we have to stand up and say, no, wait a minute, we do matter. And we matter as much as big industry and the big corporate world. 
And we have to make that difference. And for, for me, that is the delight, and that's the challenge. And that's what keeps my fire going, because it's such an impossibility to really realize anything. But it, little sparks happen, and that ignites more and more of what we do. Um, I mean, this is just from a, an article I wrote, uh, which actually tried to spell out what I believe could happen in this city from whatever already existed. It just meant a management shift or a mind shift in what could take place to ignite venues or infrastructural spaces that are already there. A lot of my inspiration came from a lot of the southern countries in this world. Uh, South Africa has the most amazing entity called the Zip Zap Circus, which is a circus school for children, um, which is a school that actually takes kids off the streets in a place close to Dharavi, sort of example in South Africa, and takes them off sniffing glue and takes them off crime, and puts them into the circus school after they come home from their regular school and teaches them the most extraordinary skills. And with those skills come an amazing self, sense of self and self-worth and transformed that entire society in that area. There's another extraordinary example of Venezuela and the musicians in Venezuela, some of you may know about uh, Les El Sestima. Uh, just one individual who believed he wanted to teach classical music, not only classical music, but he wanted to teach the very finest music to Flavela, Flavela what's it called, the slum kids in, in, in Venezuela. And he did. And luckily got the attention of the government. And luckily, the government supported him. And luckily, today, this is one of the greatest movements, again, not only transforming those young individuals, but transforming their families and transforming everybody in that neighborhood. And they are the most coveted musicians, conductors, you know, you know, the Los Angeles Philharmonic, the, the whatever. The, they, they are wanted by all the hugest orchestras in the world. Just one crazy man with a passion. And he went after what he believed needed to be done. And I think this is the most essential thing, that we need to create a world that celebrates possibility. And so that's what this is, my new baby is all about. And it's about really spreading this, this dream and spreading it through working with children, through creating opportunities of, of connectivity, of platforms of exchange. Uh, but not only children, we work with with schools, we work with parents, we work with adults, um, not only through the processes of the performing arts, we also do present theatre that we f see as the most incredible theatre. This is what BIS missed out on, which we did in October. We hope you'll come to the next lot. <laughs> but we did a fantastic array of, of professional performances for school kids. And it's about creating platforms so that the arts are accessible. I think that's what is what Janoon really does. Um, as I said, whether it's through arts encounters or workshops or performances or these creating free spaces for people to just simply create. Um, and again, no right or wrong. The most essential thing in our world is it's creating spaces where there is no right or wrong. It is simply you delighting in what you do. And, um, it is most, most necessary, I think, that we have public spaces, gardens, that are home to the arts, where we can go and just simply know, out of habit, that, oh, okay, it's the first Tuesday of the month, or it's the first Saturday or Sunday of the month, and there'll be something happening in this. I mean, I, was, I walked through Central Park, and you see the greatest of the great poets or musicians or performers, and... You pay nothing, it's free, and you happen to chance upon the most extraordinary talent. And they're there with their generosity giving it to you. And the city is also there welcoming you. And we think we want to be a first, a world-class city in Bombay. Shame, shame, shame. I think there's a possibility, but we have a lot to do to make it happen. This is a wonderful, extraordinary man. So we will be bringing once a year a fantastic piece of theater from the broad or from India and touring it across the country and really getting people to engage with it and see it in, in all its magical manifestations. Not only the fact that you come to the theater and leave, but you engage and it lingers with you much beyond the show. That is what is really, truly important. And this man was also quite extraordinary, no? I'm not going to say much. This is about it. 
you have to ask questions or otherwise we go home because you've been here a long time. There we are. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for sharing with us how you've transformed lives. I met Sanjana, I think, about 15 or 18 years ago when my kids were part of the summertime at Prithvi Process and we had a reading out and so I can really say there's been a transformation at an individual level and theater is something that transforms. My husband also was with you know her grandparents and her mother and so we've had this exposure to theater at BIS. It's been very much a part of our tradition. Pearl Padamsi has been a part of my life. So theater is just, it does, it's not about performing on stage, it's about transforming your life and being who you are. We can take a question if anybody has must, a fire must, in I their have, belly. I have a, 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 a secret to, to tell you, is that when I, when I did a workshop with Mona's son, I dreamt that one day I will have a son like him. <laughs> he was just delicious. And I can proudly say that my son is delicious. He's 10 today and he is quite delicious too. So that's quite happy making. I don't know. He's <laughs> 22 and on the plane with a baby. He called me up and said, oh I'm God. traveling and there's a baby right next to me. I said, have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> what else was I going to tell him? <laughs> anyway, um, that's an aside. So um, if there's no fire in the belly, um, I mean, I for me, actually, a question would be out to you, uh, to the school, is, or to all of you parents. It's a question for me, with my son. How do you allow for a young person to recognize this fire in the belly? And how rec recognizing it is the biggest challenge. Nurturing it and all that can happen later. How do you get to recognize it? My son likes fast cars. And I'm pretending very hard to be cool about it. And the Bagut Bugatti, Bugatti is his favorite car in the world. And okay, and I'm hoping he'll grow out of it soon one day, but maybe not. But he's passionate about it. He's completely crazy about cars. He can't be crazy about tigers or theater because that his parents have, and that's something he can't do. But it's, I mean, for me, that's, that's the greatest challenge. What would you do? How do you do oh, it? I think the fire comes at 40. If you ask these kids, do you have a fire in your belly? They just look at you like, what? <laughs> and I, honestly, I mean, I'm asking, yeah, like, well, you have a fire in your belly. They're looking at you. It's like, miss, you must be crazy. You have the fire burning. And I just feel that you recognize this when you get a little older and you find your passion. If I think about myself when I was 20, I was quite boring. I just had you know, other interests in life and no fire. Well, I but, guess actually this yeah. school should have put me off theatre for life because I was constantly forced to do these assembly plays. And there were these 10 minute skits. What are you making? What are you making? What? I was forced, no? And I would have to go around pleading with guys to say, please act in my play. And they would act really, really mean to me. That has another perspective and it's all about You know, we all have our own memories. It's no, really no, interesting. Yeah, she yeah. has a perspective. No, I have to tell you, I remember you with a green makeup and this huge, beautiful costume made out of torn, earthy fabric. And I, I think it was one of the most strong, dramatic visuals I have ever seen on any kind of theater stage. And it was you, Sanjana. And you must have been the third or the fourth standard. I don't know. I just like dressing up. I, you know, it was this <laughs> I was should be a fashion day. designer. Yeah, I would have I been mean, so much richer. I played a, fa a father-in-law <laughs> once. You know, and somebody said, I've never seen play a father-in-law. Point is, Fire in the Belly happened to me in BIS on this stage when I played Eliza Doolittle in the second yes, standard. Yes, I remember that! I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I could have danced all night and I really, really meant it. I really meant it. We can have a closing question from Dilip and I think that's it. It doesn't question, have to be Mona. a question. <laughs> no, it's not a question. I think you were being unfair about the kids here. I think, you know, it's, it's what Sanjana said. It's about... It's about finding that fire in the belly and then, and then you know, the nurturing comes in, recognizing it. And, and I'm sure they all have some kinds of fires in their belly and you, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't downgrade that. My God, I don't think I downgrade any of them. I just think sometimes it's a bit uncool. Oh, do I don't know? Sanjana, what's to prevent a Central Park kind of Shakespeare being put up in winter and the oval? I mean, what, what's... 
to prevent it. Well, no, BMC is one of the, well, you know, uh, we've been for 11 years presenting plays at Horniman Circle Garden just because I'm mad and stubborn and really foolish. And, and it happened by chance once because one did it for a festival and I fell in love with that garden. You know, the most prohibitive part of it is BMC's licenses. We have to go to 12 licensing windows. But I found a way out. If you partner with the government, you don't have to. So I saved two lakhs once just by putting their name on my brochure. They didn't give me any money. They just partnered. So there are ways, but it's tough. But that's the thing. We need more and more people to go out there and say, we want this to happen. We want it in our neighborhood. We want it in our community. I want to be able to take my son to the theater every, every, every weekend. Why not? We have to go. We'll talk over dinner yeah, Maybe tomorrow. we can talk about that a, a little later, because I think we need to close. We've been here. Thank you, Sanjana. Thank you, thank you.